The Array modifier is a modifier within Blender that allows you to make duplicates and position those duplicates of the object that the modifier is attached to. You can increase the amount of duplicates that Blender creates from the object by increasing or decreasing the count. This count includes your original object. So for example, if you want five duplicates, then you're just going to go up to six. Six minus one, one being your original, count six. There are three main methods of positioning these duplicates, relative offset, constant offset, and object offset. By default, we are on relative offset with a factor X of one. What this essentially means is that the offset from the original is going to be one of itself based on its bounding box. That is why we see no gaps in this structure because it is exactly one of itself across. So each one of these is going to be touching the other. If we increase this to two, there will be a gap large enough for another of this object to fit in between. We can prove this by going to our grid. As we can see, each default cube is two meters and each gap is two meters as seen by our grid. If, however, we were to change the width of our structure, we will see that that gap gets larger as well because as hinted in the name, it's relative to the original object. Unlike relative offset, constant offset doesn't do as such. Instead, it is a constant offset. So if you want a two meter gap, you could set a two meter gap. If you want a 10 meter gap, you can set a 10 meter gap. Now, if we look in here, we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six meters between these two. That's because the distance isn't being measured from edge to edge. It's being measured from origin point to origin point. Something to keep in mind. And finally, we have object offset. My personal favorite and oftentimes an undervalued and underlooked positioning method for the array modifier. Let's see what this can do. If I go into edit mode and move up my cube, roughly to here, let's now add in a new object, such as an empty plane axis. And I'm going to now set my object offset to use that empty. As you can see, positioning and rotating this empty will allow me to position the children or the duplicates created by the array modifier. So if I was to rotate this by 72, which is five divided by 360 degrees, we can see we now have a pentagram of default cubes, a rather satanic ritual indeed. Alas, this has been all about helping you get to grips with the array modifier an incredibly powerful and oftentimes underutilized modifier. If you're a game developer, storyteller, comic artist, or even a filmmaker looking to create a story and using Blender as a tool, I highly recommend that you head over to polyfable.com for training on how to use this software from the perspective of a storyteller. Let's continue learning about the array modifier now with a bit more of a verbose example. Let's delete everything and let's create a new object. Let's create a cylinder and let's rotate that cylinder in any direction. Really, it doesn't matter. Now, what we're going to be creating is we're going to be creating a tentacle. So let's make this a segment of a tentacle. Let's select our edge, turn on proportional editing, G, Z, and we're going to lift up like so. This is going to be the bottom of our tentacle here. Now, what we want to do is we want to add an array to this. So if we add the array now, as you can see, it's currently going in the X direction, but we don't want it in the X direction. We want it in the Y direction. So let's set X to zero, Y to one, and now we can increase the size of this very fabulous tentacle. I know, I know, truly, my artistic skills know no bound. But let's continue, shall we? Because we're not done yet. A problem that we will run into is that, essentially, we have 
inner faces all the way across. We can remove these by deleting the faces. So now we have one singular tube. In our array modifier, let's come over here to merge and we'll merge our vertices. What this will do is it will merge our objects together, which is exactly what we don't want, which is exactly what we want. But we're not done yet. Let's now create what's called an end cap for our tentacle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the array modifier. I'm going to rename this to be tent segment. And let's now duplicate and we'll call this tent cap as such. Then with tent cap selected, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select the loop and I am going to taper it off towards its end. Again, I'm not going to make this a work of art. If you're after that, head over to polyfable.com. But I am going to just very roughly make it as such. I'm now going to merge all those points at the center and I'm going to smooth this out using my edge slide tool in conjunction with a bevel. And I'll also do the same for this part here. Don't worry about that. That's just because my tent segment is there. Perfect. I do want to ensure that this loop will match up with this loop, which it does. Wonderful. So now I can hide that from both the render and the viewport. I could throw that into its own collection, but for now we'll just keep it in here. And under caps, we're going to choose cap end and choose tent cap. Let's now turn our array modifier back on and let's view our object. Wonderful. Let's add some suction cups by going to edit mode and we're going to go down to cylinder, scale this down and position as you will. Be careful not to go too far over the bounds because we are using relative offset. Level. And let's just do a quick extrude up and use our individual origin points to finalize our suction cups. Wonderful. What we can now do so that we have control over our tentacle is add a curve object. Let's add a basic bezier. And let's scale this making sure that we're on median point and we're going to now set the end of the curve to one of the points making sure that it's on the origin or close enough to it in this example then with our array object we're going to go to modifiers curve modifier and select the curve object making sure the deform axis is either y or negative y in this case y because we're going in the positive y direction. Wonderful. We can now set our array fit type from fixed count to fit curve and choose our curve. So it will always match the curve length. Let's set up shade auto smooth. And now we have full control over our tentacle. Control T for tilt. And we can even use Alt S to change the scale, giving us a nice taper from the base 
to the tip. And that was the array modifier in a nutshell. As always, I hope this video was informative and inspires you to create something new and wondrous. If you're interested in learning Blender from a storyteller's perspective, I encourage you to head over to polyfable.com.